Hi, Greg Weldon here, and I'm going to give you uh, some uh, information here on gold. Uh, we're going to look at part of the Weldon Live that I've just published for my clients. And if you want to get the entire 39-page report and you've never emailed me before, one-time offer for a free report, including all of the mining shares that come at the end of this video, which you will get by emailing me, sales at weldenonline.com. Basically, kind of using the film Sisu. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. Outstanding film. It's about the dynamic in Finland before and then during World War II. You had, of course, the uh, Winter War where Moscow uh, sent troops in. You know, Russian invaded Finland, took it over. Uh, Finland fought back, eventually got the Moscow Accord, and then the Nazis came in. And in the retreat from the... Uh, you know, from the occupation by the Nazis, a lot of this is where this movie takes place. But the gentleman who it's kind of modeled around a, something of a true story is this gentleman named uh, Atami Korpi. And he was an older gentleman. He had been during the uh, Winter War. He, after the Russians had invaded and then basically burned his hometown to the ground and killed his entire family, his wife and his child, while he was out fighting the war. Uh, he comes home and sees this. He went off and he killed over 300 Russian soldiers despite taking various would-be fatal wounds during this you know, uh, campaign. And he became known as the Immortal One. And it's about Sisu, which is a Finnish word that really doesn't even translate, according to whatever I research I did on this when I first saw the movie, because I thought it was that good. It's fortitude, tenacity of spirit. And in this case, this, you know, uh, just refusal to die with fatal wounds. I mean, it's pretty amazing. I won't, you know, no spoiler alerts here. But the point is gold. And this movie and the fight between this guy and the Nazis over this gold Really, you talk about people pushing themselves to the limit, physically, psychologically, and willingly prepared to die to own gold. You might say in the modern day that gold bugs, and I don't consider myself the gold bug, I'm bearish gold as quickly as I'll be bullish gold. We're here to make money, all right? Uh, but you know, gold books, you have to kind of admire their Sisu-like tendencies, risking it all to hold gold above everything else. And right now, after suffering fatal battle wounds, and especially over the last two years with these false starts and these big declines, many participants have surrendered already in this dynamic. Sizable liquidation of precious metals, ETFs, individual mining shares, and very low open interest in the futures markets. But the way I see it right now, after suffering all of these battle wounds, gold bulls and gold bugs are positioned to win the war. Let's take a look at a few things. From the macro perspective, and this copyright of the live, so and understand you don't know what I wrote last week, but we talked about how the economy is so much more weak than people are really, I think, acknowledging. It really is. Last week's data from the Dallas Fed, from the ISM, and from the Labor Department was horrific. It's recession-like data. Keeping in mind, you have only been had restrictive monetary policy since May. May, you finally got a restrictive, real, positive policy rate. You know, I mean, people are like, why is the economy so strong? It's like, well, you, you still have $4 trillion annualized in transfers, which is handouts from the government on the fiscal side. And until May, you still had a negative policy rate, which was stimulative. So now the economy is starting to show signs five months in, six months in. Wait till nine and 11 months in. And the stock market's kind of thinking, well, that's great because maybe the Fed is done without contemplating you're into a recession already. You don't even recognize it or see it yet. It's like the black hole once you go across the event horizon, too late to get out of it. And the dynamic around the stock market thinking this is the, the kickoff to a new bull market when you're talking about restrictive policy for the next six to nine months, maybe. Wow, that's really optimistic. Bottom line is the dollar is reflecting the shift in, in what's happening, especially with the bond market. The short end yields have dropped precipitously. The front end of the, French, the Fed funds rate is all the way down to 440, for crying out loud, pricing in three rate cuts next year. All right. On that, the dollar gets whacked. It breaks down. You see it here. 50% retracement, double top. And you violate the neckline, violate the 50-day moving average, testing the 100-day. You've had a lot of emerging market currencies that have been at record lows. I've talked about this at length. 
but in the CEW, it's 20 of them, and a lot of the currencies that have really kind of collapsed are not included in this CEW. It's more of the you know second tier kind of commodity producing export dynamic. All right, you finally have some strength in some of these currencies. Mexican peso is strong. Brazilian real is strong. Even the South African rand, which was recently at new lows, is perking up. We see the CEW breaking out. That is a sign too. If the Fed is going to be continue to be really hawkish. You know, the emerging market currency would still be getting hit. They're not because the forward Fed funds strip is saying the Fed's done and they're going to be cutting rates by the middle of next year. And back on the back of that sweet spot for gold, it really is. You are five dollars away from would be a new all time high on a monthly close only basis. The oscillator here has turned back to bullish as of August 1st at a price of 1523. Think about that. The dynamic around when you see the gold adjusted value of the dollar, not only is the dollar breaking down, but it's breaking down relative to gold. And you see that here after a very well-defined ABC 50, 38 to 50% retracement, it's rolled over, moving averages rolling over, about to violate the uptrend line with the oscillator rolling over. Dollar down, good for gold. I like to look at the long-term trends here, the two-year, the five-year, and the 10-year moving average of this race relationship right here that I just showed you, the gold adjusted value of the dollar index. Very simply, the dollar index divided by gold. It's not rocket science. And then we take these long-term moving averages. As of Friday, you have the two-year now widening its negative discount to the five-year. The bearish alignments are now widening again. We haven't seen that in a while. You've seen these kind of upticks here, you see. Uh, in the two-year, you had the uptick in the five-year, so you had the moving averages kind of closing the gap a little bit, no longer the case. And you had a nice run until the last couple of weeks, and now you're back on track for bullish gold, which is a dollar bearer scenario. Look at the 10-year moving average. It never once turned higher. I mean, it's been negative really kind of, I mean, for quite a while. You can go way back with all this. I've done this all going back all the way to 1976, something I watch all the time. And seemingly, suddenly, for the mining shares, they're Sisu. It's like, they're, they're this guy, Corpy. I mean, come on. You, you've, how many times you got to die down here and still kind of resurrect and get off the ground and go chase down your gold? I mean, you're pushing the 52-week moving average. You have this spike tail reversal low in the 61% zone, meaning the 61% of the 2022 to 2023 rally and 61% from the 2015 low to the 2020 high. That is rock solid uh, support. It gave way at the end of last year, but you've retested it. And now you get this thing above 3030, and it looks really good for the GDX, the immortal one, trying to get up again and go after that gold and go beat those Nazis, you know? I mean, it's a really interesting movie. You should definitely check it out. And what you should also check out is the rest of this 39 page report. I go much deeper on all of this specifically with our picks in terms of the individual mining shares. Email me now, sales at weldonline.com.